It is nine o'clock and it is the time for the regularly scheduled meeting of the Town of Hilton Head Island Accommodation Tax Advisory Committee meeting. This meeting is now called to order. Uh, Sundaya, have we complied with the Freedom of Information Act? Yes, sir, we have. Okay, uh, as a slight, move, a slight movement to the agenda, I'm going to move up the item. And at this time, I'm going to ask, uh, is Mr. Uh, is Ms. I know Mr. Arnold is here. Is Mr. Troyer here? Mr. Gruber will actually be doing the swearing in. Mr. Gruber, would you please swear in our reappointed member? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday to all. Uh, Mr. Arnold, it is my privilege and pleasure to be able to administer the oath to you. If you could, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. According to the Constitution of this state, according to the Constitution of this state, to exercise the duties of the office, to exercise the duties of the office, to which I have been appointed, to which I have been appointed, and that I will, and that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties thereof, discharge the duties thereof, and preserve, protect, and defend, and preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of this state, the Constitution of this state, and of the United States, and of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, and thank you for your service on this board. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Eva. Look forward to working with you for at least the next two years, because that's as long as I'm on the committee. <laughs> and um, we will have a special recognition because this is virtual. We will have a special recognition of you at the next scheduled meeting. Uh, I think it's very important that the that there be recognition publicly of uh, of our members as they're sworn in. So congratulations and welcome back. So thank speak. you very much. Good to be back. Oh, okay, so Dave, would you please call the roll? Certainly, Mr. Arnold. Present. Mr. Berghausen. Present. Mr. Farrell. Present. Mr. Fluker? Present. Ms. Johnson? Present. Ms. Martin? Present. Mr. Thomas? Present. All accounted for. Thank you. Um, Sandea, does any do, does the staff have any changes to the agenda other than the one we've just done? No, sir. At this time, we do not have any changes that need to be made to the agenda. All right. Do any of the committee members have any changes that need to be made to the agenda today? As such, I would ask that uh, the uh, chair at this time would uh, invite a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I make so the moved. motion that we approve. All right, I'm, the motion is made by Mr. Arnold. Is there a second? I second. All right, Ms. Johnson. Uh, Sunday, would you please call the roll? Mr. Arnold. Yes. Mr. Berghausen. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mr. Fluker. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Martin. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Okay. At this time, next agenda item is the election of the chairman and vice chairman for the next year on the committee. The committee members at this time, I would like to open the floor for nomination <laughs> for chairman Oh, a chairman this time. Let's go ahead and do that one first. Are there any nominations? Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Mr. Fluker again to be our chair. I'd like to second that. Are there any other nominations at this time? Seeing none, uh, the uh, nominations are now closed for chairman. Um, signify by hands, I guess, of those who are uh, voting in the affirmative. Would you please signify at this time? Okay. Um, Madam Secretary, would you please show that the vote for um, chairman was six in affirmance in uh, one uh, abstention and abstention being the chairman himself. Um, yes, sir. Now we're going to open the floor for nominations for vice chairman. Are there any nominations for vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have a nomination for Mr. Thomas, please. Is there a second to that nomination? I second that. 
All right, recognized. Are there any other nominations for vice chairman? <laughs> Seeing none, then I will close the uh, floor for nominations at this time and please signify by your raising your hand as to the affirmative at this time. <laughs> Show that the vote, it appears at this time, is six in the affirmative and one abstention. Is that you, Mr. Thomas, going to abstain? It is, yeah. All right, would you please show that for the record, Madam Secretary? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, <clears throat> next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last regular meeting of April 7, 2022. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes in the packet? And does anybody have any changes to the minutes as presented? Seeing none, uh, the, the chair at this time would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Mr. Arnold has moved. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Johnson has seconded. So Dave, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Berghausen? Uh, I'll abstain. I wasn't present at the meeting. That is correct. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Fluker? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. <clears throat> so Dan, do we have any appearances by citizens or comments or questions from citizens? Mr. Chairman, public comments concerning today's agenda items were to be submitted electronically via the town's open town hall portal. The public comment period closed yesterday at 4.30 p.m. At the conclusion of the open town hall, there were no comments. However, one citizen did sign up to speak before the committee today. Mr. Chairman, I do not have Mr. Uh, Hoagland on the call if you would like to move forward and then possibly come back, if I see that he does come on, that is up to you. I will leave it open at this time. Please notify me if and when Mr. Hoagland uh, calls in and then we will make time for him unless it's in the middle of business, but we will make time for him as the, uh, as the meeting uh, progresses. Certainly. Um, okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is new business and new business is the discussion of potential amendments to the accommodation tax grant application for 2023. And it's my understanding that Mr. Thomas has a presentation to make at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the presentation that I am going to show you is actually something that was created uh, some time ago uh, as a suggestion, as a possible way to align and uh, engage, better engage the cultural heritage tourism community on Hilton Head Island as a whole. And I'm presenting it this morning only as background for the discussion on the potential for uh, possible changes to the uh, ATAX application. The reason that the presentation is taking place is that there were several comments subsequent to the present the comments I made at the last meeting about the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Convention Visitors Bureau marketing plan that led to some interest uh, among members of council to uh, possibly pursue changes to the application that would allow for greater collaboration amongst the cultural heritage tourism organizations on the island. So I'm going to try to gracefully get to sharing the screen on this presentation. And almost there. Can everyone see that? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on most of these slides. There are three of them that will be the bulk of the, of the focus, but this shows the purpose and the reason the presentation was made a while back was that there were several things happening that seemed to create a great opportunity for gaining some leverage behind the assets that we have in this category. Uh, the changes that were taking place, the increasing interest in cultural heritage tourism and the growth of that market segment, 
uh, the growing recognition of the value of the heritage assets that Hilton Head possesses. Mitchellville and Coastal Discovery Museum, given the Santa Elena Center, um, moving to Hilton Head, uh, being two of the primary ones. Um, increasing activity on the basis of the Reconstruction Era National Park um, and the greater organization of that behind the promotion of the network of sites of which Mitchellville is one. Uh, the onset of the planning and promotion for the 250th anniversary of the revolution, which is underway at present. And the fact that the Zion Cemetery History Park was included in the Liberty Trail and will be part of the 250th anniversary events. Um, how's, how is Hilton Head positioned to take advantage of this opportunity? Um, so this is my own categorization of, the, uh, of these uh, criteria, but uh, adequate facilities, very impactful sites, not necessarily related to the physical assets visible at the sites, but the nature of what occurred on the sites. The story content, exceptional, and our heritage uh, is really unique. Um, in fact, when I think of Hilton Head and Port Royal Sound areas, history, it's first in American history for over 500 years. And no other place can make that comment. This is just a, an example of some of the more significant historical sites on Hilton Head. There are about 25 or 26 of them on here. And if we were to take the other sites on the island that are recognized with state historic markers, um, this size, this uh, list would double in size. So what are the opportunities? And, and these are identified with regard to some research that um, was done back in the first decade of the 2000s on the growth in cultural heritage tourism. Um, but as you look at what that research says about what's important in driving competitiveness as a site for cultural heritage tourism, uh, these opportunities are reflected against that uh, backdrop. So the town has made some recent efforts to capitalize on our heritage assets, uh, the cultural tourism trails and the heritage signage that's gone up, uh, improvements in the bike path system, and then last but far from least, the extension of the trolley service and, and coverage in that. The incremental possibilities really relate to the management and organization of cultural heritage assets. Um, and this concept of industrial cluster management is really where most of the focus of this presentation is. Um, taking that kind of an approach would enable over time building to a shared governance structure for the town of Hilton Head Island. And that in turn would allow the implementation of some shared infrastructural uh, support, primarily in the area, areas of promotion, transportation, and technology. So this slide is really taken from a composite of the two primary research studies that were done back in like 2007 and 2010. Uh, but they're still valid with respect to the market today. And what it does is it says certain things are necessary for a site to be able to completely leverage its opportunities for cultural heritage tourism, and that's defined as competitiveness. The, the primary drivers are industrial heritage. So what is the heritage of the cultural heritage tourism industry on the island? Cultural heritage and landscape, that's kind of the quality of the assets that are, that are available and the range of the assets that are available. Specialized local industries being those industries that are currently uh, exploiting in a positive way uh, the opportunities for cultural heritage tourism. And then finally, shared infrastructure and support services. The ones that are shaded in green, the cultural heritage and landscape and specialized local industries are ones that Hilton Head is doing that would constitute strengths in that regard. The ones shaded in red are the ones where Hilton Head is relatively lacking. Um, you'll note down at the bottom, destination management is another primary leverage point. 
And I have that shaded in green because I think our DMO is, is doing a, a good job at, at promoting the destination. Although I, I still think there's greater opportunity for leveraging the uh, cultural heritage side of that. And then weaknesses in the area of industrial cluster management and governance structure. And that's shared governance and industrial cluster management. What does that really mean? Well, an industrial cluster is a group of like tourism service providers or tourism service organizations. What, what is that? It's just an organization that is providing some service to tourists related to uh, the category of which it's part. What a cluster, uh, what managed clusters do is create a forum for dialogue and discussion among the representative stakeholders from the clusters of these like providers to allow them to identify common interests, concerns, and needs. And it definitely will support the opportunities for local collaboration. What are examples? I mean, one would be the owners and managers, let's say, of cultural heritage sites on the island. And those are the ones listed that you see with Mitchellville, Coastal Discovery, Santa Elena, Heritage Library with two sites, Hilton Head Land Trust, Fort Howell, Gullah Museum, uh, Sea Pines and Greenwood Development, for instance, because they have historic sites on their properties. And then the town of Hilton Head with Green Shell Park and soon to be online Ford Shell Rings. Other potential clusters of like providers would be our museums. You can see them down at the bottom. The resort properties that have cultural heritage sites. Tour operators, Gullah Heritage Trail Tours, Hilton Head History Tours, and then Coastal Discovery Heritage Library and Land Trust that all provide tours of their owned sites. And then information providers. So Low Country Gullah, Convention Visitors Bureau, and Coastal Discovery Museum would be another example. One entity, it's possible that one entity could be represented in different cult, uh, clusters as well. So what would the role of a cluster be? Identify shared goals and priorities for different clusters of tourism service organizations. Uh, identify the collaborative promotional and operational opportunities for the cluster as a whole or for segments of the cluster. Uh, provide organized direction for Town of Hilton Head regarding planning and development of infrastructure and governance for tourism service organizations. Provide rank priorities for the allocation of ATAX funds, site development investment, and the direction of DMO marketing as a cultural heritage destination. Develop standards for the provision of tourism services, and then advise regarding ongoing measures for shared governance as they're needed or developed. And given Hilton Head's current structure in this regard, um, how that might be administered could be along lines like this. An industrial cluster would have representatives of the different organizations in that cluster and they would form um, a, a council. And then you'd have a cluster council that would be elected representatives of each cluster. And then the board of that would be the elected representatives of each industrial cluster council. All would report up through the Hilton Head Office of Cultural Affairs, which would be the ultimate endpoint for the coordination of all of those clusters, activities, and recommendations. So as I, as I mentioned, this was presented with the orientation of providing a possibility for how to structure cluster management and shared governance or the beginning of shared governance on Hilton Head. But I think it's, it's relevant in the sense that, you know, we're talking about how do we potentially stimulate collaboration uh, across organizations in the cultural heritage tourism and even other segments, arts, arts, and, uh, arts and cultural as well. Um, on the island. So I just wanted to have that as a backdrop for the exploration of the question. Are there ways that the ATAX advisory committee through the application can either require or strongly encourage um, collaborative meetings amongst like 
tourism service providers that explore the opportunities for collective promotion and therefore more efficient use of ATAX funds uh, for, for Hilton Head. So that, that's, the, that's the backdrop and the purpose. And if there are no questions, um, I'll get out of the presentation and turn the screen back over to the meeting. Any questions from any of the members? Richard, yes, uh, Jim. Jim, just wondering what what authority would you see this um, group having? W would they, you know, you, you're going to have the members being all the current um, providers? Uh, will this council? have any authority or is it merely collaboration? Jim, I guess, I mean, in my mind, the authority that it might have would be the ability to mobilize the funds that are available from the members of the cluster, let's say, or the council uh, behind promotional activities that would benefit the member organizations but it's, it would not have any authority beyond that. It's only authority would be making recommendations that would then hopefully be followed up the line by the ATAX committee and its recommendations or by the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the allocation of marketing funds. Okay, well, thank you. I think it's a great idea to um, you know, have the shared, um, oversight and encourage coordination and reduce duplication of efforts, leverage the assets that we have. So I like it. I'm, I was just trying to understand whether there, this is a recommendation committee or they have authority. It, it's, it's mainly a recommendation committee. And you know what, it, what it's intended to do is try to create a forum for dialogue and collaboration across all of the individual entities that represent different assets. And the way things are done now and have been done in the past is that those individual entities have overwhelmingly been driven to, you know, look to their interests first and in some cases only and exclude potential opportunities for uh, collective um, activities that would benefit a much broader segment of the uh, of the groups. Well, and, and it seems to me it allows the ATAC committee potentially to consider an, an organization's collaborative efforts when formulating our recommendations to town council. Yeah. And that's where the, some of the power comes from to really um, make something happen, encourage something to really change. And, 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 that, and that's, that was the intent of the, really of this, of my bringing this information to you is that there, there could be a way of doing that if we wanted to really formalize it, but that's maybe not for us to decide what, what we might do is figure out a way, if we feel it's a good idea, to more strongly encourage or even require if possible collaborative meetings among like service providers um, as part of the ATAX application process so that they have already at least had a shot at identifying ways that they could combine funds to the greater good as opposed to just use them independently. Richard, this is, this is not dissimilar to um, the Low Country Golf Course Owners Association structure where they have elected they, they appoint a, a designee from each property to sit on a board and make recommendations. And the, the, the great advantage is, is the collaboration, duplication of effort, but then when the funds are pooled, they're, they're, they're spent more efficiently as a group with, a, with the whole entity being considered instead of just the individual location. So it works. It does work. John, that's a, I mean, that's a great example of a living, working industrial cluster. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's a case proven, uh, I would say. 
Thomas, I'd like to echo. Go ahead, Ms. Johnson. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. I have a comment and a question. I agree with the approach. I think it's so important that today's generation and visitors know that Hilton Head is so much more than just a beautiful place to vacation, but it has a strong historical background. And that is a word I wonder if we could include, could it be included some way, cultural versus historical? Many of the places and ideas that you've um, included are actually historic. They're historical um, items of fact. And so if, it, if somehow the word historical be, could be included um, in this recommendation. And my, my question was, and I believe it's been answered, that um, this concept would then be another way for an applicant to uh, gain points from the committee in, in terms of a recommendation by encouraging them. Um, and I believe the answer to that was yes, it would be used as another criteria, the degree to which there was shown historical and cultural collaboration. So the question turned into a comment and an affirmation of, the, of that recommendation. And I think it's right on point, Margaret. Um, I mean, ideally, if we could have a way of assigning points for each category in the application and come up with some way of numerically rank ordering applications based on the value des designated through those points, that would be a wonderful way to, to do it. But yeah, that, that is, that's, that's where this was headed. Um, you, you know, I know that, that in that last meeting, um, my comments relative to the Convention Visitors Bureau marketing plan we're coming exactly from what you were just talking about. The fact that our historical heritage has always been kind of veiled under the heading arts and culture, and it doesn't stand on its own, but it's very capable of standing on its own. And it has tremendous value being there. So I, that's, that's a, another, I guess, another avenue of approach that can help bring strength to the value of the historical assets that we have. Yes, thank you. And I've already been trying to pursue that with the Chamber of Commerce since our last meeting and had one meeting with uh, Ariana to that effect and have followed up with her since then. And uh, hopefully we'll have some movement in that direction. Thank Thomas, thank you for uh, spearheading this. I wanted to echo what Mr. Pearl said, you know, when you're going through this presentation, um, the Golf Course Owners Association comes to mind of how those folks come together and work for a common goal uh, and what that does, not only for each of them individually, but as a group, uh, make sure that the focus is, you know, the peanut butter is spread across for everybody and everybody pulls their own weight. Because I think the only way that this works best is if they all are all working together and that each property and each historical uh, element is elevated as well. Um, I don't see, or in my opinion, I don't think requiring this is the best move for uh, our committee. Um, just, I don't think it's right of us to force somebody's hands, but I do think strongly encouraging them and letting them know the benefits of um, coming together and organizing together. You know, each of these individuals and asset holders have something unique and have something special to the island that if they work together and come to um, and put an application for grant money, it, it does strengthen their case because you know, as a group, they're gonna organize better in my opinion. So um, I appreciate the presentation. And this is Julie, you, one, last, one, one last comment. Um, I agree with every, what everybody said, but I think it would also create more visibility to all the entities that are you know, cultural and historical on the island that you know, they don't have to fight for, you know, against each other. They can all come together for the, for the greater good. And I think that would be a great opportunity to, to accomplish this. We, we do also uh, have responsibility to review and make recommendations on the DMO's marketing plan. So we could essentially require this to be part of that plan and, and be measured in some way. Um, We'd, we'd have to define those measurements, but um, it could be part of the requirements that way. Good idea. Richard, how, you said you had a meeting with Ariana. How did that, you know, overall, how did that meeting go in terms of, you know, recep reception-wise receptivity? It, very favorably, I would say, Julie. I mean, the, the 
there were two points that were being made. One of them was that as arts and uh, uh, Gullah culture have a seat at the marketing advisory board or whatever it's called these days, uh, that the history, history might have a seat at that table as well. That would help give it a standing, at least in that forum. Um, the other one was that, um, you know, there be a certain part of the marketing plan that would be driven by the historical assets in addition to the ones that are being driven by the arts and, and uh, cultural assets now. So that it would be explicitly recognized, not implicitly included in arts and culture. And I think it was very favorable uh, response, but no further action uh, since that time. How long, if, if we were to, you know, let's just say this could become a reality, how, how long do we think it, it could take to, you know, get all the, the balls rolling, all the ducks in a row? Do we know? Uh, I mean, I would assume if we have a, a willing convener and, you know, who would, who would legitimately convene that, and I would think it could be the chamber, it could be the Office of Cultural Affairs, um, but, you know, they're both flat out strapped. I mean, taking on another responsibility is going to be tough uh, for them to want to do. But were that to be possible, I mean, I think it could be something that could be implemented, at least to have an organizational meeting of, of these industrial clusters, to use that term. Um, you know, by the end of the year wouldn't be a stretch. And that at least then an opportunities for uh, consideration of collaborative activities for next year use of the ATAX funds could could be included in that. So, yeah. Richard, since you're so close to all this, do you know who all these industrial clusters are? Do you have connections with all of them, or is there a list somewhere? Well, certainly on the historical uh, heritage side, yes, um, and even on the arts and the cultural heritage, the, on the Gullah cultural side, I do, uh, but um, I wouldn't say on the broader arts and culture side, but if you think about the concept of industrial clusters, Julie, I mean, I think it's particularly pertinent and relevant for the historical heritage sites and the cultural heritage assets that we have, but it's a, it's a concept that could apply across the board. I mean, not just golf course owners, but you could have dolphin tour providers, or you could have, you know, like service providers that would be able to work across the board to leverage the benefits for all of them, in addition to them independently uh, working. But Richard, together. wouldn't that come more as a recommendation from us if, as a committee, I'm not sure, if, are we empowered to tell them, uh, make it a requirement, or could we make it as a recommendation? Mr. You know, John, I... I I don't know the answer that I saw Jim's head shaking uh, yeah. to the so side are, that, yeah, that we don't yeah. have the uh, authority we, to require that, but. We are a creature, exactly. Yeah, we are a creature of statutory um, uh, creation. Therefore, we are limited in, in our, uh, our uh, powers and therefore uh, it's in our name. We advise. And so we can strongly recommend. <laughs> uh, we can be a a leader in advising, but we cannot require, uh, I mean, there are very few things we can require. Um, those of us who have been on the committee for at least uh, earlier than the second term know that we've had, that the main issue at some point is going to be that the requests are going to outstrip the revenues of this committee again. We've been very fortunate in the last few years because of the pandemic that because a lot of events were canceled or were virtualized and such that the, we had fewer, the requests were not as much as the, uh, as the revenues. That has not always been the case. And there's gonna be a time in the future where I can see that we're going to have to make the really, I mean, the tougher decisions where some of these organizations that have received full funding may not receive full funding because we just don't have that funding available. So there's going to have to be some, tor some sort of collaboration or agreement between the different groups, cultural, arts, uh, historic, to maybe 
collaborate and work together within that framework. Uh, yes, go ahead. Jim, I, I, I would only like to mm, uh, highlight that while our primary responsibility is to recommend, uh, that doesn't mean that we're powerless. No. That, that, that is, we, we can um, announce or share that our recommendations will consider whether organizations um, uh, communicate with each other, collaborate, coordinate, and, and so yeah, we can't require it per se, but if our recommendations to council include consideration on whether they did it, um, that gets pretty close to requiring. And so it's the, it's the intention of the chair through discussions with various members over the past couple of months since we were last in session that uh, to form uh, a committee in the, in the coming months um, of the members to look at the uh, application process. I've talked to uh, Mr. Berghausen uh, off the record, so to speak, about this. He's got some recommendations on presentations and such. And I think we're at a point now between the discussion that Mr. Thomas has brought up and the discussion Mr. Berghausen has brought up that we need to maybe look at a committee uh, of members, several members, uh, and I would ask that you guys consider that because I'll bring this up at our next meeting, which will not have a, a great deal of business other than the, it's the workshop meeting. Um, who would, in the next 12 months, like to look at that because for the year 2024, the next application process that is, that we would have full control over, so to speak, in the process. Uh, we're kind of limited this time because in less than three, about three weeks from now, the, the application goes online. And so changing the process at this point, at least the application is a little cumbersome, but I would want to consider uh, who might want to, to chair that select committee and who might want to be a member of that committee over the next few months so that we can be prepared for the 2024 application process to have any changes we deem necessary in both regards of collaboration and in presentation and information that we receive. I have There's a comment. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I'm sorry, with Zoom, is I hate to be interrupting. It's so hard in Zoom. I just wanted to add a comment that based on my experience last year, that many organizations would benefit from this approach by encouraging the collaboration. It would strengthen many of the applicants and um, just strengthen the whole process. So again, I appreciate the recommendation and I support it. So we'll leave that for the uh, discussion that we'll have. In the meantime, just consider uh, serving on a committee, a select committee, to work through this process in the coming year. At this point, I'd like to talk about the, pro the application for the coming year, the 2023 Accommodations Tax app uh, Grant application, which goes online the first, the first of uh, August. Yeah. Um, and so I've got, uh, I've got some questions about the application itself. Sindaya, do you have the application available to put up on the screen? Yes, sir. I will do that just in one moment. Okay. Jim, while we're waiting for that, if I could just take a moment and thank everyone for your very thoughtful comments on uh, the presentation and the concept. Well, thank you, Mr. Thomas, for taking the, the bull by the horns and, uh, and uh, taking on that, uh, that duty. Uh, I, I, you know, you and I have both been approached by members of the town council and such about these, this very thing. So uh, it's important, I think, for the groups to work together uh, for the betterment of all. Okay, the one question I have is on page one right there of the application in the, uh, that paragraph is shown on the bottom of the page, all right, well, in the middle now, um, where it says these presentations will be held in accordance with the emergency ordinance. We're no longer operating under the emergency ordinance, are we? Yes, sir, that is correct. 
So we need to make sure that, that language is appropriate for the for the application process at this time. I know that was probably the last two years we inserted that language because of the emergency ordinance. Yeah. And then my other one would be on the, my other comment at this time would be on the next page, page two, uh, paragraph 3A. I'd like for that first yeah, uh, applications must be filed by the publicly announced. I would like that to be highlighted, bolded, and put in red if possible. Um, I don't necessarily want a, a, a repeat of what we had last year with an applicant. Uh, other than that, the chair has no further comments. If anybody else would like to comment on the on the application itself, please feel free. Um, right now, I don't have, so sound out if you've got them. I can't see you on the screen. So if any members have any comments, please make them known. I do have a question. Yes, Ms. John. Um, last year, we did include um, the accountability for virtual presentations and information because that was the situation. Will we leave that in? It is the, the application deals with physical tourists. So I don't know that we're in a position anymore to deal with just virtual. Yeah, the, idea, mm -hmm. the idea of the accommodations tax is to get is to get heads and beds and feet on the ground. I understand. Last year we also included, this is a point of information. We included mm -hmm. the ability of the uh, applying group to um, account for virtual participation. So my question is. Will that still remain a part of the application? Well, they can make that part of the application. I mean, if they want to include that. Mr. Thomas, say, if I may. Yes. So um, I will get your attention to this section that I have uh, up on the screen right now, A, B, C, and D. I believe the, and I'll make this just a tad bit bigger so we can kind of see it. Um, this is where we tried to clarify tourists, visitors, residents. Now, if you'll notice, all of these say physical tourists, physical visitors, physical residents, and it breaks it out. Now, I will turn your attention to this second question. How was the number of visitors documented? Now, in this area was where we had those individual organizations elaborate if they did have virtual events into you know, accounts for that information there. Now, if they are doing that going forward, I would suggest that they still let us know. That way that's a point of reference during the hearings and also the recommendation that you all forward to town council. That information may be imperative to some other decisions that you would like to make. So it's up to you whether or not you want to keep that, but my suggestion would be to at least have that information. It doesn't hurt. Um, but as far as accounting for visitors and, and such like that, it is strictly physical, as we can see here. Thank you for that clarification, Sandea. Anybody else have any comments or questions about the application? I would, uh, Jim. Um, I noticed that this application is dated uh, June of 2022. Are there any other changes in this application uh, other than rolling the dates forward from the prior year? I believe that this application is the same one that we used last year. For okay. This that year is correct. Yes. Okay. So that was just me updating so I can keep a current record of when it was updated by myself internally. That way, if there were any questions, we were all on the same page. Oh, great. I just wanted to be sure I wasn't supposed to be hunting down some other changes. No, sir. Okay, great. Yeah, I liked, I liked the way we clarified last year uh, the attendance uh, 
I think that was very helpful. Okay. Anybody, any other comments or questions about the application to go online in about three and a half weeks? Okay, seeing none, as today, if you would make the changes that I recommended to that, just to the informational pages up front, I think the application is ready to go. If there's a, unless there's any objection by the members at this point. Good. And just so I'm clear, Mr. Fluker, and yeah. also committee members, it's my understanding that you would like to work on the application for 2024 within the next 12 months. So if there are any additional changes, those can be made over the next 12 months and then we can be ready for the next cycle. Is That's that correct. my understanding? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now one last thing. I do want to turn your attention to question six. Now this does speak to, but it does not elaborate on some of the items that Mr. Thomas was speaking to um, about the collaboration and how it will enhance tourism. So there is a question, but it is not as elaborate as what Mr. Thomas was suggesting that could be implemented. So I, there is something, but like I said, it is not as elaborative as what Mr. Thomas did say. That's what I'm hopeful that the committee that we come up with in the next 12 months will look at that particular question and uh, maybe flush that out more or have that as a bigger part of the application in the future. Is, is, is okay there with? any value? Mr. Thomas, would, is that would, okay be... for the current? Jim, yes. I mean, that okay. that is exactly uh, the kind of thing that I think we can do and uh, elaborate on and emphasize to the point that it creates a compelling reason that people will take the effort to go ahead and get together to explore collaborative opportunities for promotion and operations of the uh, tourism events. Mr. Berghausen, uh, I didn't there, want to cut you off. Go ahead. Would, yeah, no, no problem. Uh, would there be any merit to changing the wording just slightly to from how the organization will collaborate to how the organization can increase its collaboration with other organizations. You start, start to change the focus of that for what, from what we've done in the past to tell us how you can increase collaboration with other organizations. Or, or it, even, you know, have it state how the organization has explored opportunities to collaborate with other organizations. Yeah. Is there an ability to plant the seed here? We can develop it more later, but but we could change the wording here in just a little bit that might plant the seed for what we want. It could be a phased implementation, in other words, because because of the amount of time allowed for the 2023 application, it won't be as strong a language, but my guess is, I have a, a question for Richard also, is if four of the five that would be considered to be eligible to be in a certain cluster, say four of the five, the fifth that says, no, that's not, that's not, we have no interest in participating in that, we still have an, have an obligation to review their application. They still have, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's number one. And number two, couldn't this be a phased thing where in 2023, we I don't know if it's a modification to that language in point six or question six, or just let them know that we do give consideration, we do appreciate and see the benefit to this collaborative efforts. It would be my, it would be my intention at this point to make sure that in the process of the workshop, that comes up in the, uh, again, uh, five weeks from now, uh, that we appoint this out to them, that this yeah. is the intention of the committee mm -hmm. to change the focus of, you know, not necessarily the focus, but some of the mechanisms of the, uh, uh, of the application itself and let them know that we will be looking towards their ability to collaborate, their willingness to collaborate, all those things in the future. But I, I think maybe at this time, I would leave the language alone for this one, but let them know strongly 
in the meeting that this is the, the future may be different. Mr. Fligger, to your point, I think um, at some point we're going to plateau when it becomes funds that are available. Everybody has been uh, eating high off the hog um, with what's been available and what we've been able to get out. This collaborative efforts together are going to help us when it comes to having to make tough decisions. At least we can spread it out. We don't have to take so much away from one individual and give it to the other. We can say, okay, as an organization, as a group, you guys work together. and We do have funding to help uh, all of the entities if they're working together. And, and let me tell you this, the more information we can give to the town council and the, the, as the end product, the less questions they have of us. And, and that's what I've seen in, in how we've written our recommendation letter, some of the processes that we've now put in that information we give to them. So the more information we can give to them about how we determined what we did means they're much more comfortable accepting what we say and, you know, and that's all we do is we're recommending. They can change it. And in the past, they have modified it when we've had to fully, less than fully fund certain organizations. Those organizations still have the right to go and lobby, so to speak, for, their, for the money they want. And, they, and they're successful sometimes. But the more information we can give town council as to our rationale and how we did this, the more likely we are going to have that recommendation that it is, it is, it is, they can't alter. And that's fine, I mean, that's it. So all we can do is get as much information, give them as much um, stuff for them to rely on, and then we're in good shape. You know, that's, that's the thing is, is, let's show a rationale, let's show that we've determined this, because people think that we just meet, I, I think sometimes they think we just meet for the, the two to, uh, six hours that we do on those meetings, they have no idea about the amount of time that's put in behind the scenes. And that's another thing that, we'll, I, that I plan on pointing out, and it's something Mr. Burkhausen has brought up in the past, is when we say, explain your, 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 your uh, project in 250 words or less, we want it in 250 words or less. We don't want you to attach a 53-page um, you know, um, flyer telling us about that. We do have anywhere between 36 to 40 applications that we'll be looking at that will be presented to us over a two day period of time. And so even though we will read them, even though we will go through them, it's fairer if you stick to what the application asks for and give us the nickel answer if you can, as opposed to a, a fancy flyer, <laughs> all build out everything. So what we're gonna, what we're trying to do is basically Help you help us. And if that's the situation that it makes it much easier for us in the long run, that's, that's, it's good for everybody. Especially when we're talking about the numbers that we've had in the past. I don't anticipate that we'll see another 3.1 million visitors to the island in the near future. Those numbers were pandemic numbers because we were the, we were the place on the East Coast that was open, most available, most desirable. In fact, still is, but I already see a change in those numbers in the area that I'm in, but they're not because people now have a lot more choices. And so those tax dollars are not going to be there, may not, may not be there in the future. That's just the way it is. So are there any other comments about the 2023 application at this time? I do just one additional comment. I would suggest that as we, um, in the, in announcing the new application, the current application, and we talk about the possibility of collaboration being included in the future, that for full transparency, we have a short kind of elevator statement ready to explain what that change would look like or the rationale for that change. so that we have not the full presentation that Mr. Thomas presented to us, but a shortened statement as to what the purpose would be to include historical, cultural collaboration, those items. Mr. Thomas, could you do mm -hmm. something on a short basis of the high points and have that ready for the uh, August 7th meeting? I will be happy to. Okay. Thank you. All right. tough, it's going to be tough for him. A, a Princeton graduate has to use words. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> come on, Farrell. 
Uh, Mr. Mr. Farrell, I should say. <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions or comments about the 2023 application? Yes, sir. Cindaya. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to confirm what we will or what you would like me to do with question six. Are we keeping it as it Listen. is? Would you like to enhance? Um, what we, we have a few options. What we could do is enhance that question should you see fit. We don't have to necessarily tackle that right now. We could vote on the application with the understanding that the question could be expanded. And then I come back to you. But I do want to remind also that we do have three weeks <laughs> for the application to open. So if there's a small tweak, we can go ahead and tackle that today. If there's a larger tweak, then possibly we hold that for next year. This is Julie. I think what we're saying, if I'm understanding this right, is that Richard may take a stab at doing like a little, just a short addendum to question six to elaborate on it. Is that, is that my understanding? And if so, can we can can that be done in three weeks? It can be. Yeah. On, on, on town staff side, if it's just one question, a small tweak, yes, we can we can handle that. If it's more than you know, just the one question, several parts of the application, I would defer to our web administrator to just give her time. But and also, I want to be fair to the applicants. I know that they are online, but I just want to remind everyone that we're online and not in person. So I just, I want to be fair and consistent across the board. And, you know, I don't want to throw anything on anyone, but I do like Mr. Thomas having somewhat of a an small asterisk, discussion. Like yeah. an asterisk, just an asterisk to yes. elaborate more is what I'm yes. thinking. Yeah. So do you, does everyone feel it's ina inadequate how it currently states? Point A in question six is how the organization will collaborate with other organizations to enhance tourism efforts. But but I think, John, what we're saying is we um, we would change it perhaps to how, I forget what the words were, but then we, whatever we changed it to, that slight change could have an asterisk where Richard would create just a small, what does the asterisk mean? What do we mean by that? And that could elaborate into the, the, the cultural and historical information. Well, we're not re we're not limiting this though to just cultural and historical. No. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Any organization would be encouraged to do similarly. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I I, I find that the only thing with the way that is currently stated is that it assumes that the organizations will collaborate in the future, and I think if we were looking at perhaps how they have explored collaborative opportunities with other organizations of their kind, um, you know, then that kind of puts them more in a position where they have to state something that's been done as opposed to what will happen or may happen. Um, anyway, that, that, that was my feeling, yeah, John. I think the question, you know, in its simplest form, it would be uh, how the organization has, does, or plans or will collaborate collaborate in the future, you know, that kind of a deal, at least as a minor tweak for this time, and then look at in the future, maybe, you know, um, flushing that out some more. Jim, you're on. Uh, Jim, you're uh, muted. Yeah. Sorry, I get a little concerned if we're just asking them about how they have collaborated, because we it's it's it strikes me as almost unfair because we have not yeah. expressed that as a priority in the past and what we're trying to do is move the ball and indicate it's going to be a bigger priority in the future uh, so rather than ask how have you it's more how might you or what can you do to increase your collaboration that way we're, we're indicating um, the beginning of a change. 
in our yeah, in our consideration. Yeah, I well, think that adding talking. the word uh, "have" is a very important word. How have you? And it gets them thinking in the mindset when they're answering the question of, "Oh goodness, I should have been doing something to collaborate with others." You know, but you're not going to. Not every group has in the past, so I think it's important to leave the opportunity. How will you? as well collaborate yeah. if you haven't how will you uh but adding that word have is a big word how has your organization how have you worked with others in the same in the same industry same cluster i mean it's not that we expected that in the past but i think in the presentation on the seventh we can suggest strongly <laughs> that they need to start looking at that in the future yeah and it plants so, the seed of yeah. how happy yeah. you know and that way when you get down the road and next year's application again that that word will be there again and hopefully in the next year that they they take those steps to work with others so yeah i yeah my suggestion would be just to add the word you know has and then and then uh and then will has and will and that the way we can plant the seed for this year when we talk to them and then uh, we can flush that out more in future. Any other discussion? So right now, what I, my suggestions were that we uh, look at that language on page one that talks about the emergency ordinance, change that, uh, that we bold the application process where it says the filing deadline and then on that number six question that we just uh, that we were discussing that we add has as a part of that and then we will and then that would be the uh, changes to the physical document are there any other changes or anything else all right let's take uh let's can the, the chair would entertain a motion at this time approving the uh, form of the application process would somebody so move so moved Mr. Arnold, anybody seconding? I second. All right, Ms. Martin, seconding. Uh, Sundaya, would you call the roll, please? Certainly. Mr. Arnold? Yes. Mr. Berghausen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Fluker? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, has Mr. Hoagland joined us online? No, sir, he has not. Okay. Is there anybody have any further business at this point to uh, bring before the committee? And if not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Bye. Good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.